Hello, everybody. This is Fatima from GodinEnergy.com. Today, I have a really, really special thing that I've been working on for a while. And I wanted to share with all of you what my life is like today. You know, I have such a great life. I've got five kids. I'm uh, single for the first time in my life. I'm making my own decisions. I'm helping so many women get empowered. I'm online, I'm learning internet marketing, I'm going to different conferences. I have such an amazing life. I mean, that's really what I wanted to share with all of you today. Now, it hasn't always been like that, okay? And I wanted to share with you a little bit about where I was and my journey towards where I am today. Now, I'm gonna start with a little bit about my childhood. I'm an oldest child. I have three siblings. I grew up in South Africa. And my parents didn't really have the tools to be able to convey what love was, how to be a nurturing parent. They just kind of went through the motions of what they were taught. And we as children would just pick up on all these little messages and we just go with the flow. Because when you're little, basically you're an alpha all the time and your brain just programs and so you just go through the motions and you're just like a sponge and taking up this information. So all we're doing is modeling the behavior of our parents. And as an oldest child, I was given a lot of responsibility. I heard things like, you know, children are seen and not heard. So we have to be quiet all the time. And my parents were poor. So they were so busy running around trying to make ends meet, they didn't have time for us. And they thought that was natural and that was normal. And so we just fit into it. I was given a lot of responsibility when I was eight. My baby sister was born. And basically, she was my responsibility. Okay? When I was 14, we immigrated from South Africa to Canada. And it was my responsibility to raise my siblings. So you, you, you grow up. I grew up in a, in a place where... You have to do what you've been told. You have to be a good girl. You have to do nice things. And nobody really wants to hear your opinion, so it's kind of trained in us where you're forced into a situation where this is what you have to do or else. And so we, we take on those patterns, but we really don't know what's going on. Okay, um, I finished high school, I was an A student, I was grad convener, I was in every extracurricular activity, but I still had to maintain an A or A plus average because I had to prove to my parents, I always, you know, I was always looking for my parents' approval. And I always felt inside of me that I wasn't good enough. You know, I always felt like I couldn't do enough to make my parents happy. And somewhere I think I learned and I picked up on the fact that my happiness came from outside. My happiness came from making other people happy. My happiness came from, you know, as long as other people were happy, I was happy. When I was 20, I got married um, to my husband. He was 29. I was 20 at the time. And, you know, he, he basically said, this is what you, you should do as a wife. And when he would ask me questions in the beginning for a little while, like, what do you want to do? I was like, Oh, whatever you want, honey. You know, if he said, do you want to go to a movie or something like that, and what movie do you want to see, I'd be like, whatever you want. For me, it was always about other people. And I never learned about my own needs. I never learned about what would make Fatima happy, you know, because that wasn't important. It wasn't, I didn't even go there. It was something like I just eliminated that part of my life. And it was about others and others and other people. First it was my parents, my siblings, then it was my husband, and my in-laws, his family, and then I started having children really, really quickly. And so I just went into this trap. It was a prison. But here's the scary part. I didn't know it was a prison. I thought that was just normal life. I thought that's what everybody did. Everybody just made everyone else happy. Well, I created a life around me of being a giver and a pleaser, setting myself up for abuse. Setting myself up of being hurt all the time because you know what? When you're always trying to make other people happy, they, they look at you as a doormat. They look at you and say, hey, I can take advantage of her because she'll never say no to me. So for me, it was like, you know, my body is yours, my brain is yours, my hours, my blood. I can't do enough for you. I'm here to make your world happy. And 
it just became this downward spiral of what is it I can do to make you happy? And the more I did, the more they wanted. The more I did, the more they wanted. And I don't know if you resonate with this or you can hear what I'm saying or you can see the picture that I'm creating for you, but my life was miserable. My life was just miserable. You know, it's like I didn't know how to get out of it. I felt so trapped, but I didn't know I was trapped. And the more I did, the more they wanted. It was like these vampires around me sucking energy out of me all the time. Right? When I had my children, I would give birth to my son, and um, my son was six weeks premature, and my in-laws and my husband all came over, and it was like I had to go back to work. And I, I didn't know what to say, and I knew that women who had babies needed time to rest and have our bodies get better, but I didn't feel I was worthy of that. And all I was thinking was, oh my God, if I don't go back to work, if I don't do what they're saying, someone's going to be mad at me. So that's the pattern of a good girl. If I don't do what they're telling me to do, someone's going to be angry with me. And it's like it's like a hopeless life. It's like, what is it I can do to, to make you love me? What is it I can do to show you that I'm worthy of that? And as each of my children were born, it was the same thing. I had like three or four days off, and I had to go back full time. You know, I'd be like juggling work and this. And when my kids started nursery school, I got into this habit of, you know, no was not a word I would ever use. So uh, whatever nursery school, they, you know, I would choose for my children, my sister-in-laws would choose the same nursery school. And so they knew that if it was winter and it was cold and they wanted their kids picked up and they just had to make a phone call and say, Fatima, can you pick up so-and-so, of course I would say yes. And so what happened to them picking up my child? Well, I never understood how to ask. I never learned how to ask for what I wanted, and that's because I never knew what I wanted. I never knew how it is to, to, to connect with my inside. I put all my, my feelings and all my happiness on outside sources. As long as they were happy, I was going to be happy. And so I had to learn and study and learn and study about what is it I wanted. And I really didn't know that. And I'm going to tell you about the changes that happened in me as I started reading more, as I started looking at other people's relationships, as I started praying and meditating, I would ask myself, like, you know, what is it that's missing in my life? My second son was born in 91, and he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And once again, I was into this whirlwind of do, 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 go, 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 rush, rush. I didn't listen to my body. I didn't listen to what my needs were. But I started 